thanks for coming here today. In this opening presentation, I want to begin by saying something about who we are and outline the aims and context of the network, which has been generously funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council. The aim of the network is to bring together psychotherapists, psychoanalysts, media practitioners, and academics to explore the contemporary focus on emotionality and therapy in popular culture and the media. Thus, in the spirit of the psychoanalyst D.W. Winnicott, the aim is to create spaces for dialogue between these different groups and find ways in which we can perhaps learn from each other to create new interdisciplinary ways of thinking, practicing, and researching. Since the publication of Geoffrey Masson's book, The Assault on Truth, some 25 years ago, and following on from that, Frederick Cruz's The Memory Wars in 1995, popular media representations of psychoanalysis and psychotherapy have taken on a number of guises. Today, I'm aiming to chart the ways in which these representations have shifted in shape over time, and to contextualize this in terms of the now widely accepted commonplace, sketched so beautifully by Candy, that ours is a therapeutic culture when notions of emotional correctness and well-being dominate the media landscape of identity. How are media images of psychoanalysis related to the cultural reception of its theoretical ideas and cultural currency? To what extent can it be argued that psychoanalysis has become a central object of struggle in the formation of newly emergent subjectivities that are grounded in emotional concerns and endeavours. Very impressed by both the speakers. It's been a great day so far. I mean, I think in a sense what we've looked at initially this morning is kind of the, the, the setting of the scene, setting of the agenda uh, in terms of, you know, how this network is going to develop. I'm particularly interested in the way in which uh, television looks at the inner world and the way in which, uh, in particular, the way in which dreams are represented in television and in the media. It's been a really, really interesting, stimulating day. I've enjoyed the papers we've heard so far. Very uh, informative, very instructive, learned a lot, as I would have expected to do, and the event so well organised by Caroline and Candy. Fantastic. The inner world, to touch on the other main topic we're here about, is the mental space in which we conduct our object relations, largely unconsciously. Our objects are not things, as the word suggests, but objects of our attachments, of meaning, of love, of hate, of ambivalence. Freud called these cathexes in a rather scientific uh, sense. I think it was actually his translators who gave it that uh, word. We were uh, confronted with competition and winning from televised contests to game shows to Big Brother. We, we may know more about Jay Goody's cancer than that of our neighbor. I always argued uh, in the past that this idea of uh, self-management and choice was an impossible fiction, the, that the aim to consume ourselves free was, impossibility, was an impossibility, and that impossibility itself produced uh, a lot of anxiety. So that um, even if it seemed so very alluring, uh, that anxiety at failure would be inevitable. Well, this session had a big global umbrella title called Mediating Identity, but I suppose in different ways our speakers did talk about identity. The first speaker, Professor Valerie Walker-Dean, she talked about the identity mostly of working class women and men, and, um, and I suppose the way that reality television makes them into a canvas and creates an identity, as with 10 years younger, um, a woman is taken and she has everything done to her and then suddenly is transformed. She's not actually doing that transformation herself, but she is a canvas upon which television writes a story. And then our second speaker was, was Margaret um, Walters, who um, is, a, is a writer and a journalist, but also has a special interest in the work of the psychoanalyst Marion Milner and her work on identity. The therapeutic converges with developments in marketing and in celebrity culture, uh, which you know, are, are different phenomena to be judged differently, but uh, uh, they do converge and interact with the, um, with the rise of the therapeutic. Audiences now have much more opportunity to, um, than in the past to undertake a direct scrutiny themselves of the persons of political leaders, watching close-ups of political actors performing in interviews and meetings and so forth. But also there's abundant media commentary on and analysis of the temperaments. The only people who ever said, ah, 
heard you on the radio last night, saw you on television, are the people who work at the reception desk. <laughs> now, I think that's really very, very telling in terms of how members of the mental health community, and I'm, I'm using mental health community in its very broadest sense to speak about psychoanalytical practitioners, psychotherapeutic practitioners, counseling practitioners, and, and all the different colours and shapes and sizes in, in which we come. The death of Ivan Cameron. Um, because I'm going to move us gradually to uh, Jade Goody as a kind of, you know, as a kind of therapeutic exemplar. Because if we want to talk about the combination of mass media and therapy, there's no, there's, you know, it seems that you cannot possibly go out an entire day without actually putting her and her, the imagination of her, the fantasy of her, centre stage. And incidentally, can I also say, just stop, stop at this moment, say, the notion of fantasy, it strikes me, is absolutely, just like the notion of unconscious, is absolutely, it seems to me, an essential tool to understanding the world. Because unless you do, you think that you know what everybody thinks. And you, and you don't. I mean, you really don't. Or you have to allow for the possibility that you really... I can theorise about my women uh, columnist colleagues, but that's all it is. It's a theory. I don't know what they think, uh, actually. And I don't really know. And they could all be as different uh, as I am. It's and we may even, I understand, be able to podcast it. So you'll be able to relive this and rework the experience of your inner world ad infinitum. A very key aspect of what we're trying to do via our wiki site, Media in the Inner World. So we very much hope that you will sign up, apply to be a writer, and then add to the resources page. The whole spirit of this is about collegiality and support and building a kind of set of resources in order to establish the potential of the debate uh, inside the Media in the Inner World Research Network. So please do make sure that you sign up and contribute. The website, which is munet.org, um, is a wiki site. Um, and the purpose of that is to encourage a discussion between different groups of practitioners and professionals about media and the relationship to the inner world. So it's, it's really a space for those people um, to interact and we want to see what happens really. It's a creative process. The day's been really well organised as well. It's, it's quite nice spaces here at Roehampton to interact with lots of other people. A couple of people have come up to me and read my badge and said hello, and I've gone up to other people and read their badges and said hello. So I think it's been a really nice forum uh, and a really nice arena for people to interact with each other from fairly diverse fields. Actually, there isn't really much of an interrelationship between the academic world and the media world, and when there is, it can sometimes be actually rather bad, you know, in the forms of reports that academic academics make that they want the media to take particular notice of, so maybe actually they overstate statistics and so on. And this is something rather different because this is a, for, this is a form of inquiry. Uh, you know, it's asking a series of questions. It's not always seeking the answers to those questions. It seems to me that the questions that they're asking about this relationship between the media and the inner world are ones that I am interested in, that I have been interested in for some time. Media and the inner world can play a very important role by giving us more time to think about these questions, about the impact between media and mental health, psychoanalysis and the media and so forth. I think there's a lot of enthusiasm and a great deal of intelligence among the participants who've been here today. I've certainly learnt a great deal. Uh, I think media is often treated with great suspicion, especially mass media. I think psychoanalysts and psychotherapists have on the whole been much more comfortable with a kind of 19th century highbrow culture, psychoanalyzing Mozart, for example, or Shakespeare. But also we need to reach the people who read Heat magazine as well. I love the variety of today. I thought it was excellent. Wonderful information that I couldn't possibly have gathered by myself. And that's the most lovely thing to come. And it's a gift.